Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrea's Country Home Cooking. Today I'm going to show you two really easy snacks during this quarantine life that you can pick at. And I'm calling this episode 50-50 because 50% of it's going to be good snacks, 50% of it's going to be not so good. But they're both equally 100% delicious. So first we're going to start with some homemade brownies. These are so simple. Um, there's been people saying that they can't find like box cake mix box brownies. And I'm like, you know what? I think this is a good idea to show how easy homemade brownies are to make. So what we're going to do, you're going to get a bowl. You're going to start with one cup of sugar. I have a half a cup of flour. And this is pretty much like the box mix that you buy that's already in the bag and you add everything. That's kind of what we're doing right now is you're adding all the powder so we can add our liquids. This is one third cup of cocoa powder, not hot chocolate mix, but actually like Nestle's cocoa. And then we have one fourth teaspoon of salt. You just wanna get a whisk and we're gonna whisk this around a little bit. So if you want, you can always make a couple batches of these and put them in a freezer bag. You can put them in your freezer if you wanna wait like a couple months to use them, or you could have them ready like you would like a brownie box, but in a freezer bag, good Ziploc, put it up in your counter, and then when you want to have some homemade brownies, all you gotta do is you gotta get your eggs, your oil, and what else do we have here? Some vanilla. And then all you do is just add it to it and bake it, and you are gonna love these. And I think it's about, equals to be like 30 to 40 cents to make these, rather than like getting a brownie box. So I think that's pretty well stirred. So as you can see, it looks just like a box of brownie mix. And how simple is that? So next I have two eggs. You don't have to whisk them. Just plop them in as soon as you break them open. Next we're going to do a half a cup of vegetable oil. All right. And you can use whatever kind of vegetable oil like you have on hand. If you want to be healthier, you can probably use a little bit of olive oil. All right. Okay, now we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. When I'm baking, I don't like to eyeball the powders, just because when you're baking, you gotta make sure you're spot on. But when it comes to like the vanilla and stuff, just eyeball it, it's gonna only just give it more flavor. All right, so now we're gonna get this well stirred. Now, when I made these, my family didn't know I was making them for dinner last week, and I had them all ready, and they didn't know they were homemade, and they said they were like pretty much the best brownies they've ever ate. Now, my mom, I texted her, I was like, I found this recipe, for homemade brownies they were amazing and she's like but did they taste like the box <laughs> because every time she makes homemade brownies she said they're like worse than the box i said no these are so much better than box brownies they're amazing and the fun part is you could add like Reese cups to them crush them up you could do chocolate chips um you can top with icing last time i didn't even get time to top these bad boys with icing because my family had them gone and I said next time I was going to do a double batch, but we just had these, I'm not kidding you, two, three days ago. So I'm like, all right, mom's just going to make like one more batch. Got to contain herself with these brownies. All right. So our mixture is done. So you can see it's like pretty thick like batter. That's exactly how you want it as long as your eggs are stirring good. Now, I'm going to get an 8x8 eight eight pan or the smaller little Pyrex dishes. I'm not really sure what size this is. It doesn't say. It's just a smaller version of the 9x12, because I don't have an 8x8. I made food for somebody, and I don't remember who has it. So if you have an 8x8 pan, you know, it'd be nice to, to have back, but no big deal. <laughs> All right, so it's regularly good with cooking oil, so it doesn't stick. And then we're going to pour our brownie batter in here. I have my oven preheated to 350 and these are going to bake about 20 to 25 minutes i like ours a little bit more on the gooey side in the middle so last time i did them it was like 23 minutes all i did is i stuck a knife in the middle and if it came out clean they were ready and the edges were just nice and crisp and the center was nice and soft that's just how i like it this seems to be like the perfect dish too because it's just the right layer so look how easy that was these are ready to go. I'm gonna pop these in the oven for about 23 minutes. I'm gonna get my bowl off, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to make the next delicious treat. Okay, so our brownies are in the oven cooking. Next, we're gonna start on our healthier option. 
which is my skinny frozen bites. These things are so good. They're about 100 calories a muffin, unless you switch up with the peanut butter, which I will tell you about. But first, start with a glass bowl again. And we're going to start with some peanut butter powder. Now, I got this out to show you. I get the PB Fit, which I get this at Sam's Club. You could either just get peanut butter powder. You can use regular peanut butter, natural peanut butter, use whatever. I use the PB2 just because it's a little bit less in calories, plus you're getting extra protein. So there's about seven tablespoons of the peanut butter powder in here and five tablespoons of water. So we're going to get this mixed real good. And like I said, don't feel guilty about using regular peanut butter. And, they, and this, the powder, honestly tastes amazing. You can't taste the difference. I just, I'm kind of obsessed with this right now. I use it a lot just for like extra protein and it keeps you full longer. So if it's hot out and you want a little treat and you go grab one of these out of your freezer, like 100 calories, you don't have to feel guilty. I mean, crap, you could even grab two if you wanted to. So, mm, it smells just like peanut butter. It's so good. Okay, so we're gonna dump all this peanut butter into our bigger bowl. Drag everything out that we can. Ooh, I literally could just like lick this out. Peanut butter is one of my favorite things. I said you put me on a desert island with three items. It's going to be cabbage cheese, peanut butter, and water. I mean, that's a win-win. Alright, now, cool up. You can use any kind of cool up you want. If you want to use sugar free, if you feel better about that, you can use sugar free. This is just regular whipped topping. I'm going to put the whole 8 ounce container in here on top of our peanut butter. Right. Now, you are going to need a mixer for this because it helps to get it like really, really fluffy. So you're probably not going to hear me for a minute. We're going to get it nice and fluffy here. Okay, we're gonna take our spatula. I'm gonna get the sides all scraped down. You're starting to smell that peanut butter smell. It smells so good. All right, sides are scraped down. We're gonna give it another quick beat. All right, our consistency is perfect. My daughter will be super excited that she'll get to lick these beaters off. I'm gonna wipe my hands. I'm gonna put the mixer over top of my towel and I'll show you the next step. Okay. So now we have a cupcake container. Last time I made these, I did about five tablespoons per cupcake wrapper and I made about 10 of them. So we're gonna to shoot to get 10 out of these. So I just picked pretty little floury cupcake holders. I have tons of cupcake holders. I don't really know how because I'm not a huge baker. I like baking, but I'd rather spend the day making like a big festive meal. But these are great to have on hand now, especially since this is like one of my new favorite recipes. I'm gonna be going through these pretty quick. So, okay, now we're gonna do is we're gonna get our flip batter. And we're gonna scoop about five tablespoons for each cupcake. And if we end with 10, and there's still a little bit more, we'll flop a little bit more in here. The five's probably gonna be about perfect. Looks so good. All right, now we're going to do the next nine. Okay, so I'm putting my one muffin tin back because it only gave me nine this time. I don't know why, either the Cool Whip Company lies or something. Because last time I got 10 and used five tablespoons, which makes 100 calories. So like I said, if you use regular peanut butter, just switch up your calories, or maybe you guys don't even care like on calories. But we got nine of these ready to go. And actually, first of all, Kenzie. I think this is the best part of the whole thing, especially for my kids. Kenzie, would you like to lick these? Yeah? Here, try it and tell me what you think of it first. You like it? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. There we go, people. All right, I'll have her like out all this stuff. There you go. Have fun. You're going to go over there at the end of the table, though, okay? So people will sit there watching you lick a spatula over and over. <laughs> oh, 
the curls and hoop. Okay, next, we're gonna get chocolate syrup. Now it's almost out, so I had to put it upside down. I need a little bit of chocolate syrup. And you don't have to do chocolate syrup. You can do even like some caramel sauce. You can melt peanut butter with some carol syrup and make like a peanut butter sauce. You just make it whatever you want. And if you want to use sugar-free chocolate too, you can, but I counted in the regular chocolate syrup just because it's not even like a half a teaspoon on here. Just kind of like decorates a little bit, makes it pretty. And then I am like sprinkled obsessed. Like I can't tell you how many different sprinkles I have in this house. So I'm using my really bright colored ones this time. I'm gonna sprinkle these on the top. Now I have some of these actually in my freezer ready to go. They're already frozen. I'm gonna show you what they look like. But these are gonna go in your freezer for at least an hour till they get hard. Once they're set, you're gonna take them out. You're gonna place them into like a freezer bag and then you can pull them in and out of your freezer as you want when you're ready to eat them. So these are gonna go in the freezer and I'm gonna show you the ones that I already have done. Don't they look pretty? I guess it's a good thing I'm making these because I only had two of them left. So I put them in a little freezer bag. These are what they look like frozen. So I have two of them left and these things are so good. Okay, so you take that off. It's literally just like eating like a bite of ice cream. They're so good. Guys, guilt free pleasure right here. Make her your own. Mm. These have been in the freezer probably maybe like two weeks. They taste like I just made them. So pop them in the freezer at least an hour, then treat yourself to a good healthy dessert. And we're back. And guess who smelled the brownies? This one. So she asked if she could be the taste tester and I figured all you out there would not care if this cute little face did some taste testing of our brownies. How excited are you to try these brownies? Okay. Good? Could you eat this whole pan if mommy let you? Yeah, she definitely could. All right, so it smells amazing in here. We let them cool a couple minutes. All right. So they're still gonna be a little, a little more, oh, look at those. Look at the gooey in there. Now blow on it, blow on it before you take a bite. Let me get a little sliver here. Try it as well. All right. Mm. Oh, my God, my pizza. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they're warm. They're gooey. Can I eat the knife? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure, you can eat the knife. And they are divine. Guys, try this today. It's so easy. This is stuff that you should have at home, ready to go, and you're not going to want to stop it. Just one. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you like this video. And we appreciate your support for Andrew's Country Home Cooking. Send in lots of love. Bye.